All right, guys, so let's get started here. Um, today we're gonna be doing a masking webinar, going over some of the basics um, as far as masking goes. We'll start out doing some basic masks with some filters and local adjustments, and then we'll go into replacing a sky by masking different layers. And then from there, we'll get into some more advanced stuff. We'll get into some color range masking and then luminosity masking. So if you are a more advanced user, stick around to the end and we'll go over some more advanced techniques and tips as far as masking goes. Um, quick reminder that we are recording this webinar. And so if you, have, if you need to miss out on anything for any time, um, we'll post this to our blog and our Facebook and our website later today so you can catch up on anything that you missed. Um, I also have Mo writing along with me today. He'll be doing the Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit up that Q&A module and we'll try to answer as many as we can. There seems to be quite a few participants in here, so if we don't get to all of them, I'm very sorry, but we'll try to get to as many as we can. So let's get started here, and we'll just start out with a basic photo and do some, so not just some basic masking real quick. So we'll grab this photo here, and we'll just head into the edit module. And all I'm gonna do for this photo is I've just cropped it. So I've just kind of cropped this photo a little bit and there's no other effects onto it. So I'll just go into this tone and color and kind of just set a basic tonality for my photo. We'll do this auto. So now we have a basic tonality for our photo. And when you start masking, you're gonna start masking probably using different filters instead of effects. So if you wanna start masking with filters, just head into the effects tab here. And we'll just add a new filter. And we'll just add bleach bypass. So now we have a filter added onto our photo. And if we wanna mess with the masking of this filter, we need to head into this little masking option right here. It's this little icon right here, and you can click on it. And this will show you all of the masking options you have for this filter. And keep in mind that this white area here is showing you your mask view. So if I view this, it's entirely white. And that just means that it's entirely white because white reveals and black conceals. So if this whole window right here is entirely white, that means it's revealing the entire filter onto your photo. So if I invert this mask, you'll see that it turned it black and it removed all of that filter from my photo. So now if I view it, it's black and there's nothing applied to my photo. So we'll just invert it again and go back to white so it's actually being applied. And now what you can do to continue masking is if you wanna maybe remove some of that filter from a specific area on your photo, you can use your masking brush. And if you, you, if you do add a filter, it's automatically going to add, or not add, it's automatically going to select your masking brush for you. So you'll notice that I'm in this filter right here in the masking view, and I can see that I have my masking brush selected. So now I have these options up here in my tool, tool options up here, where I can actually modify uh, the masking brush. Um, more commonly, you're probably just gonna be selecting these different modes like paint in and paint out. And if you wanna switch between the modes a lot quicker than going into this drop down menu here, is just hold down shift and then hit X on your keyboard. And you'll notice that that switch from paint in to paint out. And you also have your size up here, which if you wanna change your size a lot faster than um, kind of scrubbing along with this thing, is you can just use the bracket keys on your keyboard. So if you just use the bracket keys on your keyboard, it's, it's a lot quicker than going up and actually finding the exact size by scrubbing. Um, you can change your feathering and then an opacity. We'll get into the opacity uh, later along um, in this video. But for now, let's just stay at 100 for feather and stay at 100 for opacity. And then let's just brush out a little of this filter from inside this flower here. And actually, I'll change this filter to darker. There we go. So now we'll brush out some of this filter from in this flower here. And you'll notice over here that wherever I'm brushing out, it's showing up as black within here. That's because I'm painting, basically I'm painting black onto this filter to remove it from the areas that I don't want it to be. So now if I view this, it's all black where I don't want that um, filter to be applied to my photo. I'm basically masking out part of that filter from wherever I don't want it to be. And so now let's go back into the opacity. And so now if I wanna go, and I only wanna remove maybe 50% of that filter, but I still like that sort of look, I could reset this mask and now I'll just change the opacity to about 50. And now I can brush in here. And now if I go back and view my mask, it's a gray spot rather than a black spot because the opacity is turning it into um, a gray color so that it's not masking your entire filter off of your photo. So we'll go back and we'll view that again. 
We'll turn it up again to 100, and we'll just mask that completely off. So now it's completely removed from this area, and if I turn this on and off, you'll see that that filter is only being applied to this area around the flower and not the area within the flower. So now there's another option you can use um, besides the masking brush, and that's the masking bug, which is basically just an adjustable gradient that you can use to mask on your photos. So we'll just add another filter here. And let's just add a vignette. And let's just make it big softy, which is probably the most popular one. And you'll see that it's kind of being, it's a being applied to the photo and it looks great, but let's say we don't want it applied to this left area over here on our photo. We can grab this masking bug right here. And if you want to grab it rather than clicking up here with the icon, you can use M on your keyboard. And that's basically with any of these icons. If you want to see how to get there faster and see the keyboard shortcut, just hover over it and it will tell you. So you'll see it says masking brush and then in parentheses B. So that's a good way to learn the keyboard shortcuts if you don't know what they are. Um, but anyway, if you want to grab your masking brush, you can hit M on your keyboard. And then in the masking brush options, you have different tools you, or different modifiers you can use. Um, we're going to actually use this linear right one. And you'll notice that on this linear right, it has the white side on the left and then the blacks on the right. That's because we're going to be masking out the right side while we're still revealing the left side. Um, so we'll just actually grab this and we'll drop this down here. And you'll see that it's only modifying and removing the filter from this left side and leaving this right side here. And in this masking bug, you have these different um, bubbles in here. This smaller bubble is where you can actually rotate your masking bug around. So if you wanna rotate it to a different area in your photo, you can do that. This bigger one here allows you to move it around. And then these, uh, basically the perforated lines around here is where you mess with the feathering of the gradient. So if you want a really hard feathering, you can close it all the way, or you can open up to kind of smooth and blend it a little bit better. And now if we go back into our masking view for that vignette filter, and we view it, you'll see that all this right side is white because it's revealing all of that vignette filter, but it's actually removing it from this left side so we can actually see that little flower right there. So those are kind of a few quick ways to just basic masking, um, just getting some filters um, to where you want them on your photo. Um, let's get into a, a more advanced technique here where we're gonna replace a sky. Um, Mo, do we have any questions so far? Yeah, there's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some great questions coming through here. And uh, just to remind everyone, there is a Q&A module. Um, so if you do have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to throw some questions into there and I can answer them or pass them up to Dylan. Um, the first question here, Dylan, from Henry is asking about how to reset sliders back to um, zero. So if you could just show that real fast and develop or something, how you reset those, ex like an exposure slider uh, back yeah. to zero. Um, um, yes. So we'll go back into develop and it's super easy to reset your sliders. There's there's kind of all these different um, reset buttons here. These are that's what these are, and you can it, these are going to reset the entire pane. So, if you look on these panes, that all of them have those little kind of arrows around, and if you want to reset whatever's in that pane, you can just click it, and it'll reset all of those sliders. But if you want to reset just one slider, just double click on the name. So if I want to reset midtones, I'll just double click on midtones, and it'll take it back to zero. And then also in effects, so if you want to reset, say we pick this big softy effect, if we want to reset that, we could just click the arrow and it'll reset the entire filter. So those are, those are just, yeah, so those are a quick way to reset anything if you um, make some adjustments that you don't want. Are there any other questions, man? No, I think you're good right now, so just keep on uh, going through. All right, man, thanks, Mo. Um, so yeah, we'll get into this um, sky replacement here. Let me go back and grab the photo. And we'll grab this photo here and let's head into edit. And you'll notice now in 2019, um, if you guys aren't familiar or you've been kind of playing with it a little bit, we have layers integrated inside of the edit module. So you don't actually have to go to a different module to add layers, which makes sky replacing super easy. Um, so inside of layers, if you want to add a new layer, all you have to do is just click on this button here and now you can add a new layer to your photo. 
We can go in our extras pane. It's kind of similar to the one in 2018, if you guys are familiar. Um, comes preloaded with a bunch of free textures and backgrounds and skies. So we'll just find a good sky layer here. And once you found one, you can just click on it, or double click on it rather, and it will add it onto your photo. So there we go. <clears throat> and now if we wanna grab, basically grab the layer and move it around, it's similar to Photoshop where you just hit V on your keyboard and now you can you have your move tool and you can move your layer around. Um, you'll also notice that you have the same masking options inside of these layers as you do inside of the filters and local adjustments. So you have all the same masking options which makes it incredibly easy when you're trying to you know, replace a sky. So let's we'll actually just turn down our opacity a little bit here and I'll grab my move tool again and then we'll just kind of set it where we want it to be. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we'll turn it back to 100. And what I like to do whenever I'm replacing a sky layer is I'll put the sky layer on top and then I'll do like I just did, I'll lower the opacity and then I'll move it around to where I want it. And then I'll take it up to 100 and then I'll drop it below the other layer in the stack so that's on the bottom. And then I'll select the base layer, the one that I was originally working with, and then I'll grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. I'll probably just make the brush size a little bit bigger with the bracket keys on my keyboard. And then what I like to do is, especially if I have a large tonal area like this of sky, I'll grab my perfect brush. I'll make sure I'm set to paint out and then I can just brush out part of the sky. And I think it's gonna remove some of this mountain here, but we can always just go back and paint it back in. Let's zoom in here and see if it got our mountain. I think it got a little bit. Let's go back down. I'm actually gonna turn off the perfect brush. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and hit X to go back to paint in for my brush. And yep, there was a little bit that got taken out. So we'll just add that back in here. We'll zoom out. And now we, you know, real quickly kind of just re remove that sky and brought in the new sky for ourselves. Um, and you now if we go into this masking view, oops, and now if we view our mask, you'll see that it um, shows us that we masked out this top part and this left, the bottom part's white because it's revealing that bottom part of our photo onto our screen. And this actually, this mask view is a great way to kind of clean up some stuff. So if you'll see here that we have this little white right here, we could just remove it. Now we can go back and so we've replaced our sky layer here by just kind of using that perfect brush. But the fact that we have reflection on the water means that we have to um, put this sky layer on the water so that it, it matches the reflection. So what we can do is we'll actually go back of our, out of our masking options and we'll select this sky layer and we'll right click it and we'll duplicate that layer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that layer and we're gonna put it on top, just like that. And we're gonna hit V on our keyboard, which V is going to grab you the move tool. So hit V and then you're gonna head up here and you're just gonna flip the layer vertically. So you're just gonna click this button and it's gonna flip your layer and then same thing as before, lower the opacity and then just drag it down to match the reflection in the sky. Probably about right. Right there, it looks good. And what I like to do is I'll leave the opacity at like 55-ish and I'll grab my masking brush and make sure, making sure it's set to paint out. And then I'll just brush this out of, you know, wherever there's no water so there wouldn't be any reflection. Or wherever there was, you know, there's mountain in the, the water so there wouldn't be a reflection there. And we'll just kind of get it, paint it out of here. And you don't have to be too precise because it's not going to be at full opacity anyway. But, I mean, you want it to look good. So spend as much time as you want kind of getting it dialed in. And then just head over to um, your layers pane. And the great thing about these layers is we have um, masking and blending modes for each one. So you can find your blending modes right here with this little gear. Um, common mistake is to have a different layer selected and then you you know, you modify the blending mode, just make sure you have the right layer selected that you want to modify. You can use these blending modes here. And then I usually just head down to like overlay. And 
then I can modify the opacity to either make it, you know, a lot stronger or not that strong. So let's see how that looks. So that looks pretty good. Um, and now what we can do is now that we've kind of masked in uh, this new sky layer is we can right click and we can new stamped layer. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to merge all of these photos together um, and create a duplicate. So you're gonna have this merged together layer with all of the three layers, but you're gonna have um, the layers intact as well. So it's basically going to create an extra copy of whatever you're working on and then merge it together. So once, is it, once that merges it together, we're actually gonna take this photo in and uh, we'll add some different effects and local adjustments to it. And so yeah, you'll see now that it created a whole layer of that. So if I turn off all of these other layers, so now we have this entire layer that we can work with. And now we can modify different areas um, on this photo without having to select each layer to modify them. Um, before we head in there, do I have any questions um, with the sky replacement or anything, Mo? Yeah, there is a, um, there's a question from Jan actually that's a little bit more about uh, refining masking and uh, getting around like trees and hair. Uh, okay. So I think you might actually be covering that soon. So there's not really too much to answer here, yeah. but uh, yeah, just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Just a reminder to everyone, there is that Q&A module there. So if you do have questions throughout the webinar or want Dylan to show you something over again, uh, feel free to throw that into that little module there and I can interrupt him to show something over again. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you're doing great, Dylan. Just keep on uh, going. Awesome. Thanks, man. Um, so let's actually, I'll, I can show that real quick with this one. We'll turn off that, that um, merge together layer and then I'll actually grab this and let's go over here to these trees. Actually, I don't even know if it would need this. And there's also a question uh, about going over the stamped layer part that you just covered again. Okay. What was that so, question? Um, just if you Oh, just go to go it over it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'll do that. Oops. Well, we'll go back. Well, this that would be a bad example for that anyway. So we'll zoom back out here. Um, so, okay. So basically the new stamp layer. Um, so if I don't have this layer and I have all of these other layers, a new stamp layer basically is going to um, merge the layers that you have in this layers pane together. And then it's going to duplicate them. So basically it's going to keep these three layers or whatever layers you were working on intact. And then it's going to merge them together into a new layer. So, Basically, if we want to do that, we'll just, we'll new stamp layer. And this is just going to take um, these four layers here, duplicate them, merge them together um, so that we can play with, you know, basically this whole composition, but also have the ability to go back and modify these other layers that didn't get merged together, if that makes sense. So once this merges here, um, we'll show you how to go back in and modify it. Okay, so now that it merged together, um, so you'll see if I turn these layers on. Actually, I'll, I'll turn this layer off and then I'll turn these layers on and off. So you'll see that we have these different layers and then we have the merge together layer that we were looking for, which I kind of messed up over here. So I'm gonna delete this one and just keep this one. Yeah, and also, uh, so if you wanna delete layers, um, probably a good thing to go over is just right click and then you have all of these different options, like delete, duplicate. Um, if, keep in mind that if you do merge layers, like if you merge these layers or merge visible, that's not going to duplicate them, whereas the new stamp layer would duplicate them. So um, also if you do hit merge layer and you don't mean to, you can always go back and hit control, control Z or um, Alt Z on your computer. Okay, so now we'll go in and we'll just add some local adjustments to kind of show some masking um, for local adjustments. So we'll just hit the local tab and actually I'm just going to turn all these layers off. And now say we want to add some local adjustments onto our photo. Basically it's the same thing as masking inside of filters um, or inside of effects with filters. So if you want to add, you know, say you want to add some darkening somewhere on your photo and you don't want it applied to anywhere else, you can grab this and we'll just set it to darken. And just to give you an example, but say I want to just darken up this mountain area here. I could brush that on, actually we'll turn off my perfect brush, sorry. And I could just brush that on and it will apply a darkening to my photo. But let's say we wanna add um, 
so let's say we want to add some more color to our shot. We'll go in here and we'll click this vibrance. And what I like to do is I'll keep my vibrance up, but then I'll add a little bit of saturation and then a little bit of temperature. And now we'll go in. Oh, got to make it sure it's not set to darken. So now if we go in and we brush this on, you'll see I was bringing in a lot of that color into our sky. But now that we've added that to the top part of our photo, we got to add it to the bottom part of our photo. But the bottom part of our photo is too dark, or it's supposed to be darker because it's obviously the, the reflection. So we'll just add a new adjustment. We'll do the same thing we did, but we'll leave that darkening on. And then we can just play with the opacity just like we would with any of those filters. And now if we view, you know, any of these masks, basically it's just kind of the, it's that basic, like you're just using your masking brush and you can kind of just paint on any specific area onto your photo. Um, and if you want to remove it, you can just shift X and then you can paint it out from wherever you want to remove it from your shot. There we go. And also local adjustments too are great. Like if you want to add, um, say you want to deal with this whole bottom half of your photo, but you don't want to deal with the area up top, we can add a new local adjustment layer. And let's just make it set to, let's add some detail. Let's add some detail and then color. And what we can do is we can grab our adjustable gradient, which is this icon here. And if you want to grab that without actually grabbing this icon is, you'll see that it says shift K and it will grab that for you. And it's basically the same thing as your masking bug, but it's only applied to local adjustments. So you have your, you know, your presets in here and you can change the gradient or the shape of the gradient. Uh, we'll leave it at linear top and we'll just drop this down. And we'll just modify the feathering. We'll add a little bit of exposure. Oh, we gotta twist it. We'll turn the exposure down. And now let's just pull up on the structure quite a bit. And you'll see that's only being applied to that bottom area and it's kind of bringing in some nice detail into these trees and in this reflection here while leaving this kind of cloudy area soft and leaving the, the mountain here nice and soft too, which we can add some detail into the mountain, but I wasn't going to do it with local adjustments. If you want to add detail into the mountain, it's pretty easy. We'll just head into effects and we'll just add a filter and we'll add dynamic contrast. And then we'll go in and we'll actually invert it so that it's black. And then we'll zoom in and we'll do the same thing like we did earlier with that flower. And we'll basically just grab our masking brush, set it to paint in. And now we'll click this onto Surreal so it's really strong. And then we can just paint in that dynamic contrast wherever we want it to go. So now we have you know, our reflection here, our mountain, Probably last thing we could add is maybe a vignette. So yeah. <clears throat> so in just a few minutes, you know, it's incredibly easy to mask a sky in now, especially with layers being integrated into the edit module. So um, that's probably a quick way to mask a sky. Remember that you should have your reflection um, similar to your sky. So it's pretty easy to forget if you do a nice sky replacement to put the, um, sky layer actually onto the water too, but um, just kind of remember to do that and uh, your photos will appreciate you for it. Are there any other questions, Mo, before I head into luminosity and color masking, color grading or color range masking? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, there's a question here from Jan. How do you quickly zoom in if you're using a tool? Um, you could probably show that here in your next example, just zooming in and out. Um, and then there's also a question on if you can do an example of aligning visible layers, which I don't know if you're going to cover too much on the macro aligning front today. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to show aligning of the visible layers. Um, cause we're going to focus more on just like the, um, the masking aspect of photo raw. We're going to have more layers. We'll actually have layers webinars down the line. Um, we'll probably get more in depth with the actual layers part of it, but this one, we're probably just going to go more over like the masking and stuff. Um, but I'll, okay, I'll, uh, I'll shoot Marcel an email here and we'll, okay. uh, I'll get her an answer to that. So if you could just keep going through, I think we'll be good. Awesome. Uh, okay. So to zoom in, Jan, what I usually do is I probably do it different than other people do, but I just, 
I always just keep my hand on the keyboard. And then if I'm like, say I'm brushing and I have my masking brush selected and I want to zoom in, I just hit Z and then zoom in. So Z is to grab your, your view tool here. And then if you want to zoom out, just click. But you could also go over here into your um, nav area and you could use these kind of preset areas over here, which is always going to be there if you have a um, like a brush selected or a tool selected, you will you can always have this nav area open and you can click in and then you can use this to pan around if you'd want. But I'd probably recommend just keeping your, I just keep my pinky, like my left pinky on my keyboard. And then like if I need to zoom in, I'll just hit Z and then I can zoom in really quickly. And then I can go back to that brush by just hitting B or, you know, whatever the tool is. But yeah, you can also use this this nav over here too. It's It's kind of personal preference, so. Um, all right, so we'll head back and let's grab another photo here. This is probably going to say, try to save all this stuff. And actually, I, I forgot at the beginning, but for the people that are still around, I'm actually going to launch a poll real quick. And it's just four quick questions, and it kind of gives us a better idea about you know, kind of how to do our future webinars and also about the one we're doing. So if you want to answer those questions real quick while I get back and uh, grab a new photo, I'll, that'd be great. So close out of that. All right, so now let's get into um, a more advanced technique as far as masking goes, but it's actually incredibly easy and it's, um, people are kind of scared about it because it sounds uh, advanced, but it's actually incredibly, incredibly easy. So we'll just go in here and we have this photo of flowers, which flowers are probably the best one to try this out with because there's, there's specific colors and they're bright and vibrant. And it's really easy to grab the colors. So if you want to create a color range mask, if you just go into effects here and we'll add a filter and we'll just add, say, uh, a color enhancer filter. And let's just um, probably remove the saturation all the way. And let's go into our masking options here. And if you want to create a color range mask, which basically a color range mask is you're using a color to um, define where you want to, the mask to be. So let's grab this color range mask by clicking this option here. And now what we can do is we'll grab our dropper tool here and let's just desaturate these purple flowers. So we'll click that and now we'll go into view. And now if we, we can mess with our color range to, um, kind of add or remove from where we don't want it to be. So we'll play with that color range a little bit. And then we'll actually pull up on the saturation so it's not incredibly ugly when we go back. And now if we view it, now if we play with the saturation, you'll see that it's only being applied to those purple flowers and no other flower on uh, the screen here. So that's a great way to just grab specific colors and mask them. So let's say we wanna We'll go back and we'll remove this filter and let's add kind of a stylistic filter. Let's just add black and white and then we'll make the purple flowers um, the only ones that we can view. So we'll go in here, we'll grab a color range mask, we'll grab that purple again, view it, we'll get it how we want it to be, then we'll invert it so that it's only being applied to the other areas that aren't on the black or the purple flowers. And now if we view that, now if we play with the color range, you see that we can kind of modify where we want that black and white to be. And now if we turn that off and on, you'll see that this purple area on the flower stays the same, but the other areas are desaturated and black because we put a black and white filter onto uh, the rest of the area on our photo without being applied to those purple flowers. Also say we want to add maybe some dynamic contrast and we only want it applied maybe to this flower here. We'll just grab dynamic contrast. We'll turn it up all the way to surreal and then we'll just go into our masking options again, grab our color range mask, color picker, drop it down, view the mask, modify it, view it. And now if we turn this on and off, we'll actually zoom in. And now if we turn this on and off, it's only being applied to this area in here and then maybe some slight areas around it, but it's not being applied to anywhere else on the photo, but you know, that little color here and then this flower there. So that's just a great way that you can add specific 
um, filters and local adjustments and things like that into specific color areas on your photo without actually modifying different um, uh, areas or subjects that have different colors. We'll turn that off and we'll just do, we'll go back into browse here. Are there any questions about color range masking, Mo? Yeah, it looks like there's one on selective color masking, um, kind of the same thing. And then actually there's a question from Philip here. Um, as you start going into your effects and stuff, if you could just turn off and on solo mode uh, to kind of show people what oh, that yeah. does or does not do, that's kind of a real cool feature that uh, would help people out here, I think. And otherwise, yeah, just keep uh, cruising through. There's some great uh, results in that poll there also if you want to take a peek at it real fast. All right, okay, so people love luminosity masking. So we're gonna get into luminosity masking in just a sec, and then let me just kind of show you guys this solo mode. So let's add some different filters over here. Let's add a vignette, kind of my favorites. Oops, I gotta pick one. Okay, so now if, so you'll notice that I have these filters here now, they have these four different filters, and you'll notice that if I click on one and show it, it'll hide the other one from being open. Um, this is a good way to stay organized, so say if you wanna um, stay organized where you're having only one open at a time, that's probably the best way to do it. If you wanna have actually every single one open or just kinda wanna have freedom to open and close which ones you want, you can head up to view, is it view? Oh, yeah, right. Window. Window, yeah, window and then solo mode. So if you have this off, now if I go in here and I can open, you know, as many of these as I want. But if you want to go back and actually have them close at the same time, just go back and click that, that solo mode there. And now that'll kind of clean it up for you. And also, a um, cool thing that Mo always reminds me about is that you can actually rename any of these filters. So if you want to rename this filter, say you want to, I don't know, you're Fave Sunshine or something, you can rename that. And it'll kind of allow you to keep track of these filters, especially if you have, you know, 15 filters. You know, a lot of people add different filters on other photos, so that's a good way to uh, rename them. Just double click on the title and then you can rename it whatever you want. Okay, so let's head into luminosity masking, which seems to be a fan favorite. And it's actually probably one of the easiest way to mask. It's not even, not very advanced, but, um, it's a really cool feature. So we'll just add an effect here and let's say we want to apply dynamic contrast, but we don't want it applied to anywhere but this, the white on our mountain here. Basically let's add a filter and let's add dynamic contrast and let's make it surreal. And let's go into our masking options and we're going to hit the, the box lumen. And so this is going to add a luminosity mask onto our photo. And so a luminosity mask is basically taking the luminosity, so the, the brightness and the darkness of your photo, and then basing the mask off of that. So now if we view this mask, um, you'll see that it's, it's basing the mask off of the, the light and dark areas on my shot. So now if I wanna modify that, I can go into this levels area here and this windows area and I can adjust. And let's say we only want it applied to the white in our mountain. Well, we can modify that and we'll remove some of that um, that white from the, the area down here so that we can adjust it so it's only being applied to the top of our mountain. So now if we view it and turn this on and off, you'll see it's only being applied to the white up here around the top of our mountain and not being applied anywhere on the bottom. So this is a great way, especially if you're dealing with obviously, you know, areas in your photo that are completely white, um, or completely black, so let's say you wanna add some detail into this area, but you don't want it applied to the top area, you can view that again, and I usually just invert it. And now we can modify that. Now if we view that, you'll see that's only, be, I mean, there's a little bit being applied up here because we didn't modify it, but it's mainly being applied to this area on the bottom of our photo without being applied to the top of our shot. So this is, like I was saying, it's just a great way to grab um, 
the different brightness in your photo and kind of use that as a reference to um, how you want your photo to be masked. Let me see, let's see if I can grab another example here. And I mean, this one probably be a good one too. We'll go back in here and let's just reset these effects. And let's just add, hmm, we'll do this. Actually, we'll do this, sorry. We'll add a glow filter. It's always a good one to show. So we'll add a glow filter here and let's just make it darker. And let's say we only want this glow filter to be applied to this area within um, the flower, like this kind of bright area without the yellow. We can grab our masking options, luminosity, view it, and now just, just like earlier, just kind of modify where you want the white to be. And it kind of takes some playing with, with the, especially this level slider. But the more you do it, the more you'll, you'll get it. So there we go, that probably looks pretty good. We'll view that. Let's just make this a lot more intense. But now if we view that, you see that's only being applied to the white areas in our photo. It's not being applied to anywhere else around the shot. That's probably a bad example. That glow didn't really look very nice. So let's, let's do it with dynamic contrast. Make it surreal. Add the luminosity mask. View the mask. Now just play with your levels a little bit. Now we'll view it. So there we go. So now you'll see that it's only being applied to that area that has that, that brighter look and it's not being applied anywhere else because we modified um, how we wanted that luminosity to be applied to our shot. Um, any questions on luminosity masking? I know it seems super advanced, but it's actually you know, pretty easy to do on a photo. Um, one thing Philip Zwick just reminded me of here is copying masks, uh, especially with luminosity masks, like copying and pasting oh, yeah. and inverting that mask yeah. as well. Yeah. So Make let's sure say, that. yeah. So let's say we have this this mask right here and we view it, and that's kind of where we want it to be. We can actually let's clean up this area over here, and you can actually you can add and modify your mask too. So if you say you have this luminosity mask, and you want to add a little bit more in there, you can just grab your masking brush and you know, you can paint in the areas that you want it to be applied as well. You don't actually have to just keep that same luminosity look. Um, you can go in and add and remove different parts too. So we'll just go in and kind of clean this up. And let's say we like this mask. We like how it looks. We can copy this mask. Now let's add another filter and maybe let's just add, mm, some curves. We'll just bump up the midtones a little bit. There we go. So now we can go in and we'll grab this and we can just paste this mask inside of our masking options. And now it pasted that right onto where we had it before. And now if we view it, you'll see that's only being applied to that area that we used for the previous mask. So that's a great way to um, copy and paste masks. You can also invert the mask. So basically this would just invert it to where all of that would be. Um, wait, that didn't seem right. Hmm. Well, that's not letting me invert that one, but let's just add a new filter and let's just add, we'll go back and view this. So we're not just staring at black. We'll just add a photo filter. And now we say if we go back into here and if we do something in here, like we'll grab this luminosity mask, view it. Now if we invert that, it's gonna invert it to where it's basically the opposite of where it was. It doesn't seem like it's doing it that well, but 
anyway, that's, so that's how to invert the mask and then to copy and paste them. Um, incredibly quick way to actually um, modify filters, local adjustments. Um, and then you also have the same masking and blending options um, as you would um, with the layers as you do with all of the filters and local adjustments. So any more questions, Mo? Um, I can show, you know, we still have a little bit of time. I can show something. Yeah, there's a question from Scott. Uh, what's the best way to feather the edges of buildings when you are replacing the sky behind them? Um, I don't know if you've got an example you could show uh, refining or chiseling that yeah, mask. Let me, look. let me look here. Okay, so... I wish I had those photo walker photos, Mo, that we had. Actually, here, we'll go to you get on. This will be a good one. Oops. Oops. Sorry, it's like going into different folders without me clicking on them. <laughs> Not the one I want. There we go. So I had a pretty good example. Something down here. Sorry, let me just find a good one. Um, there we go. Let's go back. Oh, no, why are you doing that? <laughs> I'm going to try closing it and reopening yeah. it. Your cache might be full from all the editing that you've been doing. There we go. Okay. Sorry guys, we're gonna we'll be back in a second. I just gotta load up real quick. Okay. So we'll grab the zoom, share raw. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll grab this photo here. And let's grab this one. So let's head into right here. We'll add a new layer. Go on and find a nice kind of gray sky we can add. Mm. That one probably will work. So we'll hit V on a keyboard kind of rearranges how we want it to be. It's not gonna be perfect, but I'll get the job done. Put it on the bottom. And then probably the best way to do it is if you have, well, at least my favorite way to do it is just to have large tonalities um, wherever you're trying to replace the sky. Because if you have a sky that you, that you want to replace, but there's a ton of different clouds in there and stuff, it might be a little harder to replace that if you're gonna do it this way. But if you have large tonalities, like this one is just like a big blob of gray up here. So what I would do is, if you get into a situation like this, is to just grab your masking brush, go up to your perfect brush and make sure you have your perfect brush selected. And then, like I did earlier, put the sky layer on the bottom after you've kind of positioned it. And then you can zoom in And now if you use your perfect brush, we'll kind of go around it. And obviously there's a little bit left over. So what I would do is if you have that, go down to this refine area here, click refine, that chisel tool, and you can either double click and it will kind of remove that, that feathering, that white, um, like the ghost or the haloing around the building, or you could, um, basically grab it and then increase the brush size and then you could actually just brush wherever you wanted to remove that from your building because the perfect the perfect brush is gonna you know get the majority of it but then you're gonna have that little kind of haloing or the the um, that white area around the edge and so the the chisel tool is probably your best friend for removing that around buildings um, that's what I like to do whenever I'm replacing a sky um, especially if it has that little white around it so I hope that helped. 
Yeah, I think that helped a lot there. Um, there's another question as well from Jan while you're there. Instead of using the perfect brush, could you use a luminosity mask to mask out that sky? Yeah, you could. The reason I don't like to use luminosity masks sometimes is because the, you have to play with the... I'll just show you. I'll demonstrate first and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So grab a luminosity mask and we'll view it. Invert it. Oops. Invert it so it's only, you know, the blacks being removed. Oops. Um, let's see. That's probably pretty good. So we'll view it. And you'll see kind of has that, that line around it, which um, the perfect brush might have a little line too. Um, you could probably do it either way. I, I would prefer the perfect brush method, but if you do the luminosity mask like you did here, just kind of the same thing. Go up, grab your, your um, chisel tool, and then you could do the same thing. And you could just kind of paint over these every now or over and over and remove that. Or you could turn it up a lot higher, double click it, and you could do it that way. Um, but that way just seems kind of um, like it's a lot more steps. So let's just reset this mask. And I'll grab the perfect brush and I'll show you how fast this would be if you just use the perfect brush. And then I can, I think Jan actually asked about the refining too, so I can go in and show it down here. Okay, so if you have, you know, tiny areas like this where you have, you know, maybe like some hair or grass like this, you could either do two ways, and I would recommend this way, is I would grab, like we were doing earlier, with the chisel tool and just kind of brushing over it. Oops, that's way too strong. And you can modify the amount, sorry, so... In these retouch or these refine tools, you can actually grab you know this chisel tool here, and you can modify the amount. Um, I probably didn't even explain the chisel tool, but the chisel tool basically removes this uh, hard edge around whatever you're trying to mask. So basically, it just ch is chiseling away at those tiny little areas from the edge of your mask. Why is that doing that so much? I think you might have found a bug. <laughs> I might have. Anyway, but it, you'll get the idea. So now you can go down and kind of clean that area up. There we go. That looks a lot better. And I don't know if you guys have noticed know this, but if you hold down the space bar, um, whenever you're zoomed in, you can um, pan around your photo. So it'll make it a lot easier whenever you're trying to retouch like this. And then you can kind of go around and clean this area up. And then if you want to re or actually kind of refine the mask a little bit, you can grab um, your refine brush. Let's see how this works. And then it'll refine that area and kind of remove that white from around those, um, the grass and stuff like that. So this is great. That'd be a great one to use for hair, Jan, um, if you're masking around hair. Yeah, so that's a good way to clean up um, like masking and you'll see it was a lot quicker doing it the perfect brush way. And now we can just grab um, the refine brush, the chisel tool, turn it back up to 20 or up more. And then what I usually do is if I have a bunch of the haloing stuff is I'll just make it super big. Oops. And I'll go over that stuff. So there we go. And now if we just kind of crop this, It was a pretty quick sky replacement. Um, I, I mean, you can use the luminosity mask way too. Um, either way, whatever you find is the most suitable way for how you want to edit. Um, uh, do how you want to do it. Because either way is right. There's not like a wrong way to do it. And you can also use the perfect brush too to kind of clean up, especially you can just sit there and click 
and it'll remove it or some of it at least. And then you can go back in and use that to clean it back up. Yeah, so that's um, some more of the advanced ways to kind of refine your mask and stuff. Are there any other questions? I think we're kind of coming to the end here. You know, I think uh, there's no real questions, but um, Philip's asking if you could just demonstrate real, qu real quickly using a luminosity mask on a texture, um, just to okay. show that off. But other than that, I think uh, you can close it down after that. Awesome. Well, we'll just do. We'll just use this one, um, and we'll just use the luminosity mask to add. <clears throat> we'll try to do a sky replacement with uh, the texture. So, let's reset this. We'll delete this layer. And we'll go to effects, we'll add a new filter, we'll add a texture, and let's just go into skies. And where was that gray sky we just had? Boom. And I usually like to, especially if I'm adding a texture, as I'll go and I'll make it darker or replace, just so I know, you know where it's at. And then I'll usually turn up the opacity to like 100. Okay, so now we have this texture here, and let's go into the masking options. Let's click Lumen. Now let's view that and let's refine it. There we go. And then you could go in Oops, got it. There we go. Now we can clean it up. So just like that, um, it might have been easier to just do it with the texture then. Um, so yeah, but that's a quick way to do it. Just it kind of all depends on how uh, good you can get with this level slider here. Um, the better you get with that, you can you can kill luminosity masks. So, does that kind of was that a good example for you, Philip? Yeah, I think that uh, helps him out there. So, uh, thanks a lot. That's great. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we'll view this again, so we're not just staring at that mask. But those are some more advanced ways to mask. Some basic ways on how to mask. Um, we'll have more webinars in the future. Um, like I was saying, we'll have more like actual layers webinars where we'll get into more um, of lining visible layers and things like that. Um, Glad I could show you guys some different masking techniques. Like I said, this is recorded, so we'll post this um, on our blog and our Facebook, um, basically everything we have later today. Check it out if you missed anything, and thanks for riding along, Mo, and thanks guys for uh, joining me.